Feedback. Feedback. Hi, this is Theo Broughton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback. 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 Along with you. Happy Monday to each and every one of you who has tuned in to Feedback, our positive image production by Hood Research. My name is Theo Broughton, co-founder of Hood Research, and my co-host, Thabiti, and we welcome you to the program. And we thank you so much. There has been so much taking place, Thabiti, oh man, for the past few days and weeks and and all of that. And um, I just want to uh, say good morning and happy Monday to uh, Vera and to Gladys. Uh, to Keith and um, Ron and and Tim and who else? It's, it's just so many of you who watch. I want to say happy Monday to Sister Fedora. She watches regularly as, as well. And um, to Carl. And who you want to say uh, happy Monday to? Well, belated happy birthday to Brother Keith. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, yes. Wanna, we appreciate you, brother. And also... Uh, Sister Jackie, uh, Sister Ruth, Andrea, Professor Griggs, Gladys, Clementine, and you, the viewer. And also, I ask you, you see the numbers at the bottom of the screen, and I have pen and paper in my hand, and that way you'll be able to take information. Uh, later in the show, I'll give uh, some contact information. The city of Detroit is hiring, and they have... Uh, over 10 different jobs, and uh, mm. it's an opportunity for, especially as a resident of the city of Detroit or nearby, Highland Park included, of course, right. uh, it's an opportunity for you to uh, have weekly or biweekly income. Uh, we need choices, and em unemployment is certainly one of them. It helps us to have money to maintain our finances, but it also helps us to improve our community as well. Love where you live. Hey, that's right. You know, and, and uh, there are some things going on throughout the community uh, to emphasize that. Uh, Kim Sharobi was on with Hood Research this past Saturday, and she has a project going on at Noble School, and the uh, young children are making um, uh, uh, trash baskets and uh, they're focusing in over on, I think she told me, Fullerton and something and near a noble school. But getting them to understand that uh, where you live should be cared for and you should want it to look nice just as you want yourself to look nice. So I was really happy to have her on, on our conference call this past Saturday. And you too can uh, be on our conference call. We're on every Saturday from 3 p.m. until 6 Whatever time uh, allotment that you have, you can call in and share, ask questions, and and just enjoy. You know, this is something we started three years ago when the uh, COVID virus hit the whole world, and uh, we've been doing it ever since. The telephone number for those of you who listen to the BD and have your pen and paper handy when we come on. <laughs> It, the number is one, area code nine seven eight, nine nine zero five thousand. It rings one time, at which point you should put in the access code, and the access code is three three eight seven two nine. Press the pound key, and you'll hear us talking. Again, that's one or nineteen seventy eight. I guess I could say nine nine zero five thousand. Three three eight seven two nine. Press the pound key. Some people call it a hashtag. Some people call it a tic tac toe sign. Whatever you call it, press it, and you'll hear us talking. You know, the funny thing about just just uh, for a moment, you say tic tac toe. Now, old school, we grew up with that, so we kind of know what it is. So we go by that. Uh, mm -hmm. David renamed it, and it's the hashtag now. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know. Somewhere in the middle, it became. Um, <laughs> 
the pound oh, sign. Sorry. So I guess <laughs> right. he's got a first, middle, and last name, but it's all the same <laughs> sign. Right, right. It is uh, interesting how the uh, language con continues to evolve and, and words come in and and words go out and <laughs> and the next thing you know it's being called something different like wow uh -huh. well this is the hardest language I've heard most people say whether they're foreign or domestic this is one of the hardest languages because knife you don't hear the K pneumonia you don't hear the P so that's the American language for you well a part of the reason I believe is because the English language, why they call it the English, I, I think it's a, a melting pot language because ethnic groups from all over the world have contributed words that end up in the American dictionary. The word okra is from Africa. The word hammock is from Africa. It ends up in our American dictionary. And if you notice uh, at the bottom of the word and, and its explanation are tiny little letters. And it might say FR. That means it comes from the French language, you know. And so we have, um, I looked it up one day, uh, 1 million 900 and some words in the American dictionary. But over time, as I was saying, words come and go and come and go. And uh, that's the approximate number that we have, uh, one million song. It's just, you know, trivia, I guess. <laughs> Hard enough for the people here to figure out how to say it, so everybody else coming in really catch it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and I dare say they, they, if they come from Italy, they, they probably pick up words uh, used here that are based from their country or from, you know, whatever country it is. You, you so know, sorry. since you mentioned the uh, okra, you know, just me being the nerd that I am, mm -hmm. it, would be, it wouldn't be a bad thing to maybe if we found African words that have found their way into the English language that people who don't know are, would be surprised and know, oh, wow, mm -hmm. wow, I didn't know that was African. Mm -hmm. Because especially us, I mean, I, you know, the French and the German and all that, that's cool, but we deal with yeah. black issues here. Right, right. And there's a lot of Latin that's, you know, it's, it's in, in our American dictionary, but that's a wonderful idea. You know, I, I attended a, um, a lecture once, and, oh, my gosh, it's, it's been quite a long, long time ago, at a church, uh, some... Pembroke, hmm. I want to say Mayflower Church, and that name of the church. But anyway, the the gentleman who was there was uh, someone who was uh, introducing uh, all the attendees to the uh, information, you know, about that. That's uh, probably where my curiosity started. And um, we have, as uh, black people, so much to be proud of. But there, there seems to be so many of our people who shy away from their own history, their own information, their own images, and, and all that's been created by them. It, it just makes you wonder, why are you always trying to imitate somebody else when they're trying to imitate you? You know, it's interesting. I uh, was looking at a program, and... Uh it, it was dealing with the continent of Africa, but what was being said is they had uh, prominent people in Africa saying how the American uh, image or the image that they uh, seem to put forth about Africa is always to suggest that it's wild jungles and wild people and uh -huh. such when they have cities more sophist as sophisticated and some more sophisticated than uh, American cities, including New York, L.A., Chicago, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But uh, the African was saying, or the Africans, because it was a few of them that were speaking, and, and, you know, I really took this to heart, is that uh, 
they have constantly, meaning Western society in general, mm -hmm. uh, Western media in particular, has always tried to make us look bad in the eyes of our brothers and sisters on the continent and tried to make them look bad in our eyes. So to what you were saying, uh, we, we try to disown or, or separate ourselves from that as mm -hmm. if, uh, no, no, I don't want to be like them, you know. And you don't know who them are. You just know who they were. T you were told they were. Right. So we have to... Uh, educate ourselves and we can't count on the schools anymore Ooh, speaking of schools oh my god in florida the governor uh the santis i believe his name is yeah. is uh now beginning to lose support when he started out uh ranting and raving and take these books out of the school take those books out of the school then he wanted to close some schools now he wants to close libraries Libraries. The, the man is just losing it. He's <laughs> he was uh, appearing to be under the assumption that if he began to uh, talk about Black history, Black people, uh, and certain kinds of books that that uh, he thought were not fit for children to read and learn from, that that would get him a large base because I'm um, hearing that he wants to run for president of these United States. But as he continues to go on, and it just it gets worse and worse, there seem to be some people that are backing away from him. And there, there was a, a report, I guess, yesterday or Saturday, that some of the very, very wealthy Republicans are holding their money in their pocket uh, I guess some of those wealthy Republicans that might have donated large sums of money to him by now, they're saying, we're going to wait. They're going to wait. You know, it, it's interesting, too, because I was reading something recently, and one of the books uh, that was banned, I'm, I'm not sure if it was specifically about Rosa Parks, but she was in it, but they used her as a person to say, yeah, we shouldn't be talking about Rosa Parks, as if that lady was a militant panther or uh, Malcolm, somebody who oh, had a fiery wow. speech. They say, yeah, we shouldn't have that Rosa Parks book here. I thought, wow, how low can you sink? Yeah, really? Yeah. Oh, my goodness, that I missed that one. I, <laughs> well, you know, um, I was speaking about people imitating us. Yesterday I was channel surfing, and uh, this woman was talking about some product she was trying to sell. And she says, if you l use this, whatever it is, for 28 days, your lips will get bigger. Mm. <laughs> she she mm. did. I I kid you not. <laughs> and, and you know, when uh, Bo Derek was presented, she had braids and uh, she was being um, presented to the, the world as if she and her braids were it. You had to have braids, boy, if you were going to be somebody in the white community. So that's what, you know, she, she showed. And it is, it's just, you know, and all of these in, injections for uh, 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 enlarging the, the hips and... Derriere. Yeah. I mean, it just goes on and on. And, and our, our folks just need to know you have so much to be proud of. And the world truly... Um has imitated us. Uh, hip hop, the music, rap music is celebrating its 50th anniversary now. And one of the things uh, I've listened to a number of people who are in that genre and who report on it saying how if no matter what you look at now, and, and, and I guess I'm never amazed at it. And, they, and by the way, they do say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. We don't seem to understand that people are imitating <laughs> us on a serious level. But um, hip hop's influence has become global. It has been and still remains the top music uh, genre of uh, all music. I mean, they're not really playing no country music on commercials and uh, maybe a little opera or something, depending on what it is. But we've dominated in so many ways, but we have 
in our own minds diminished our own worth mm. and uh, we act out of characters that they've created for us and and that's the thing that uh, when they talk about psychological warfare it doesn't get any deeper than that when they've got you so twisted mentally that you don't even like yourself but everybody else loves you uh, and I'm sure, uh, it, I'm, I'm quite sure with this, that even some of these skinheads, racist KKK, I know they got some Charlie Pride records. I know they got some Ray <laughs> Charles records. I know they got some Aretha. I've even dealt with some. So they do in their own sly, slick way mm -hmm. love you. And that's maybe where some of the hate comes from. As Bob Law said, they hate us because they ain't us. <laughs> All right. They hate us because they ain't us. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go in the studio with that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I and like that, I like that. And give many examples, but um, that's why I say it's up to us to educate ourselves. And I've heard uh, people involved in church communities say that uh, they're going to try a little bit more to uh, bring in our social and cultural and traditional values you know, it's yet to be seen because talk has always been cheap. But it's it's important for them because I think part of their uh, uh, lack of, let's say, membership in the congregation is because the repetitiveness of their sermons. Uh, and I heard a minister, uh, someone who uh, was very involved in the church, say more or less that um, in the churches now, they will – First, we know it's more or less dominated by women because men have feel kind of alienated from the church anyway. Mm -hmm. It doesn't speak to their needs. And, and if an institution doesn't speak to your needs, whatever the institution is, there's no reason for you to have a, a desire to become a part of it. But the church uh, now has uh, been negligent in, I would say, trying to uh, – expand their viewpoint so therefore you can expand your congregation because people need something that they can go to and feel good about mm -hmm. and feel encouraged you know even like what you're uh working with um love where you live you know churches should be involved in that too don't just be concerned with the grounds around your church and the money in the uh, collection plate but the community in that area that you're in as well mm -hmm. you know print some flyers put them on doors let people know we're going to talk about black history because uh, i got my black wall street on shirt on thanks to theo by the way <laughs> but but make them feel good about where they live then they have a reason to not only attend church but to support the functions mm -hmm. that's an excellent point you know and, and then I, I wonder sometimes if the ministers uh, have a um, what's a good word mm, narcissistic attitude that they want a lot of women around them in the church, they're not really interested in having too many men there. You know? Yeah, there is a, uh, unfortunately, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, let's say maybe a subliminal uh, insecurity in having men because then you have someone that can challenge you. It's just like having a, having a father in a home or not having a father in a home. Well, the children are definitely going to act out if there's not a male presence because strength is derived in many cases, especially in a patriarchal side mm -hmm. like this from the male. So if the uh, church doesn't have, a, if some of the ministers, reverends, don't have a certain obedience that they know they can get from the women, because the women will look up to them, you know. He's, he, you know, he's a deacon. Uh, he's a reverend. He's uh, all this, you know. And titles seem to go a lot farther. So men sometimes can make other men feel uh, insecure, challenged, and, and and I do think that's part of it as well as not speaking to, mm -hmm. well, what can I do to help build these brothers up? We get brothers who are returning from. Um, let's say incarceration, and now we have to reintegrate them into the neighborhood. Churches would be an excellent way to start that because that has always been the foundation of the black community, really. We would not have had any or many of the achievements we had had it not been for the black church. Mm -hmm. It was a safe haven for us. It was a place for hope, faith, and, and, and unity and community. Mm -hmm. And and that has dwindled, and we can see in America now there's not much morality, uh, 
because there's not much church. And I don't push this church or that church. I just say that in general, if it wasn't for the church and some of the moral uh, tenets that they tend to uh, bring about and how you interact with your neighbor, how you interact with yourself and uh, how you treat others. If we didn't have that, it'd be chaos all over the world. Mm. And you know, uh, when, when you were mentioning uh, returning uh, citizens, uh, some of them learn about the uh, Muslim um, faith and the, they don't call it a church, right? The mosque. And and as as they are in in prison or jail wherever, they are uh, receiving uh, information and contact uh, from uh, from the uh, mosque, and and some of them find their way. So you know, as you were, you were saying, reintroducing the uh, returning citizens to community and. Uh, character and working together. I, th I think that works well. Oh, oh, okay. We got a call on the line. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Uh, would you give us your name and how are you viewing us? And if this is Brother Ford, I apologize. For <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that giggling? <laughs> well, this is Brother Ford. Hi. And I'm a, I got to be just a little abrupt here today because I'm going to call back in about 20 minutes just for them listeners that don't hear this. Okay. And I would love everybody to hear what I got to say. All right. Phil, you know, uh, everybody in the city is proud to have you. And you have a birthday coming up. I think it's tomorrow or maybe in two days, but I know it's, it's soon. It's you tomorrow. Know, we're glad to have you, and I miss we thank you for your dedication to the city. You have informed us, you and yourself. And I want to say happy birthday to Al, too. I think he got a birthday coming one day or two or something also. But you, you have informed us. You've told us to get out and vote. You've told us who to vote for. You have enlightened us. You have adopted a school. You have kept this show going when other shows came and left. And you have also hosted other shows. But guess what? what? People all listen, and I'm going to call back and let you know in about 20 more minutes. <laughs> this costs money. All right. We are blessed to have you and blessed to have Hood Research. And we all should be donated to this cause and what you're doing. You know, people, you need to give to something that is giving you something back. And I really mean that. Uh, I just want to say to listeners, you know, you play the lottery, you go to the casino, you get your groove on, and then <laughs> you go get your little special drink and all the rest. But you should be donating to this lady. 40 years, I guess. I think it's 40 years. We close. should stand behind and do things for people that's doing something for us. I tell everybody that, and I'm going to leave it right there, but I would just love you or your co-host to be very uh, explicit and tell us how we can donate or join Hood Research, because this is something that we should do. And you know, people all around the city know me for saying this. All we got is each other. Now, we have you. God bless you. Tell us how to donate, join, be very explicit. And I'm calling back in 15 or 20 minutes. God bless you. All Bye -bye. right. Thank you, Thank you. James. Thank you. Thank you, brother. We are now at 930 yes. a.m. Oh, my goodness. It, it came really fast. Um, for those of you who are tuned in, uh, we're going to our first break, so uh, get your orange juice, your, your coffee, your milk. Call somebody. Tell them to tune in, call in, and share with us. And we'll be back momentarily.
It's time to do something more. Join the Detroit Police Department, either straight out of high school or make a bold career change. Officers start at $40,000, plus health insurance, paid vacation, retirement plans, and more. Apply online at joindetroitblue.org. It's the These Nuts Show with your host, Butter, and friends. Butter here, magician escape artist, practicing for my show tonight. Come on in, have a seat. Seconds, you gotta be enough to get out of this one. Twist a little turn, cut off. It's showtime. It's your old friend Butter here. I may be a nut, but I know to wear my mask. Please welcome my first guest tonight, fitness guru Wally Lama. I wouldn't woman here to tell you to wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds so you will stay healthy and strong like me. Almond and Cruz here, sliding in with the news. Distance is what we must do to stay away from the la 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 chin and other germs in the air that might be trying to get on you. Social distancing is a wonderful way to see friends. As long as you're six feet apart, you win. Hey there, friends. I wouldn't miss this for the world. It's me, Pumpkin Spice, your healthy girl. Remember, it's important to use your kind hearts and follow the signs to stay healthy and safe at all times. Chica Chimitsky here to say, don't forget the little ones that need you to lead the way. That's how we remember to wash our hands, mask, and social distance today. Morgan Brazen. Yes, it's me. Here to sing about health and safety. We are all here to help get a message out to your grapevine, teaching healthy choices to stay safe all the time. Don't let these guys drive you nuts. Put your mask on first, they'll let you be. And it keeps me safe la, from the... La, la, chew. That's trying to get on me. Butter me up! She's right, you know. Thank you, Hallie Cranberry, for joining the show. Let's all be nuts about our health. Social distancing, wash your hands frequently, use hand sanitizer, and wear a mask. Practice what we learn to stay away from the la 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 shoo germ. We're all in this together. Coming soon, the many adventures of these nuts in a theater near you. This is Bruce Simpson, your city of Detroit ombudsman. I am here to address all of your complaints and concerns. If you need assistance regarding city services, please contact my office at 313-224-6000 or contact us via email at ombudsman at DetroitMI.gov. This is Bruce Simpson, your City of Detroit Ombudsman. Hi, this is Theo Broughton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on... Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHBR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback. Feedback. And take us along with you. As you know by now, if you watch your show at any time... You know, that's my favorite commercial. <laughs> anyway, we are back, and thank you for staying tuned to Feedback, our positive image production. That's good research. We want you to um, join us, call us, uh, be on our conference call, and uh, every once in a while we tip out there and, and uh, have an in-person meeting. We have folks who do call us, and they say they're having cabin fever, and they want to do something. And I think we will uh, have another one uh, soon. The weather was getting nice, but this morning when we stepped outside, I'm like, oh, my goodness, what happened? Yesterday was beautiful and bright, and today it's like the sky is falling what did chicken little say the sky is falling <laughs> <laughs> but have no fear 
warmer temperatures are coming near. And, and I generally say this time of year, just in conversations, that we're at that point where winter and spring are having a tug of war because it's not like turning the light switch on as soon as uh, the 21st of March gets here, spring is automatic. And because I saw snow showers today, so uh, just seeing those little light snowflakes. But the point is, is that uh, what we experienced was just a preview. A lot of, you know, we got hooked on it, but it was just a preview of what's to come. It wasn't, you know, sort of like having an opening act, but you're waiting for the main act to show up. So the opening act does this little thing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's a, a reason also for us to consider uh, our health as well, because some people still think that, well, I put it like this, I saw people who were dressed not for the weather. And we know that there's a black store that's on Linwood and Glendale where you can get a lot of the healthy things you need right in yes, your neighborhood. Absolutely. Fresh fruit and vegetables. And there are those who have been there already who have uh, told us how impressed they are. And the lady who has opened the store, has been open about uh, four weeks or so now, was living really nice downtown. And uh, the building that she owns was uh, owned by a suburbanite uh, who was here and in 1967. After the rebellion, he decided that he'd be safer moving out. And her uh, family purchased that building, and they've had it for all these years. She was uh, riding around in the area, and knowing that uh, what we hear often, that there's a food desert, decided to sell her fancy condo, take that money, and invest it into the community. And that's where she is now. Linwood and Glendale, right on the corner of Linwood and Glendale. We're going to go over there, as a matter of fact, after the show this morning. And we encourage you, come on out. Meet the owner and the uh, sales personnel, uh, workers, at the Linwood Glendale Supermarket. And here's an incentive. Hand-packed ice cream from the other side of the state. Ooh, so they did yeah. not uh, fudge on anything. They want to give you top quality products mm -hmm. and uh, some exotic things as well. And you can believe uh, on a cool day like today, I can get that ice cream. I know it's not going to melt too fast, <laughs> and I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm not going <laughs> to kid you on that one. Oh, yes. And, and, and one of the things, that, uh, excuse me, Theo, one of the things I want to say and emphasize even more so is that too many of our people have been going to some of these party stores to, to get something to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, as we know, Brother Malik Shabazz has always protested about tainted meats mm -hmm. and also cans that have been well past the expiration date because, you know, they don't have that good turnover in terms of moving things off the shelf. Mm -hmm. So you might get a can of pork and beans or whatever it may be that has been a year past the date, but oh. the... People in the uh, gas station are not trying to say, well, out with the old, in with the new. Mm -hmm. They want to keep it on the shelf until it's sold. Mm. And uh, the same thing with the, uh, these party stores and these gas stations. That's not where you get a healthy meal. Our community, more than most, and I know the uh, uh, Mexican or Sp Hispanic community is suffering the same way because they have many of the same health issues in terms of obesity and certain things. Mm -hmm. That's because our communities have lacked uh, the type of uh, nutritional things that we need. And we have to kind of, we don't have to kind of, we need to change uh, the things. So this store, Linwood and mm -hmm. Glendale, uh, is an excellent choice. You can get fruit. We need fruit. Uh, just a quick thing mm -hmm. from Dick Gregory. He said that our bodies are 97% liquid and probably 80 some percent of that is water so you should eat things that are closer to your body composition which is fruit mm -hmm. which is, is primarily water uh and as opposed to getting a big bag of chips uh getting you a two liter bottle of uh some uh ginger ale or something which 
has no nutritional benefits, but you can't eat it. So I, you know, I can't knock the fact that you can put it in your mouth. But after it passes your tongue, what is it doing to your body? Mm -hmm. And for me, this is the critical thing because another thing he said is that we wonder why does diabetes and certain illnesses run in our uh, families. That's because the diet runs in the family. Mm -hmm. If you stop doing what great grandma, grandma, and mama was doing, then you won't have the same issues as, as them. But as long as we continue on this road, so the, the store is uh, an excellent opportunity for those in the neighborhood who would go to a gas station and say, uh, you know, give me a couple of hot dogs from the gas station. Mm -hmm. That's not where you want to buy your food at. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And, you know, uh, we were uh, talking earlier about um, things uh, coming in and things going out as far as the words are concerned. The same thing with food. You know, it was uh, good when lard was no longer sold because a lot to fry, you know, foods in lard was not healthy. And, and today... I, well, maybe there's some store somewhere where you could still buy lard. But for the most part, it's not sold anymore. And uh, that that's a, a good thing. And for um, the members of the community to start trying some, you know, like kale as an example. A lot of people uh, have been adding kale to their salads, uh, raw Fresh kale is good. Some people have been cooking kale by itself, or they have been cooking it with collard greens or some other greens that you know they uh, uh, use. And that that's a, one of the um, uh, new greens to add to the shopping list. And there there are other uh, items as, as well. And um, people cook with olive oil now more than they did before. Crisco and all that <laughs> mess, mm. and then you had the can mm. on the stove with the old grease. Oh, <laughs> yes, a little <laughs> strand on top. To get to yum. Recycle yeah. it, yeah, recycle. cook fries, fish, chicken in it, just Oof. whatever. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I've got uh, red leaf and green leaf kill in my refrigerator now, and I would uh, include, y'all know about Popeye the Sailor Man. He, he's not in vogue anymore, but what? he said he's strong to the finish because he eats his spinach, and I've got spinach. <laughs> And those are the two things. And, and one of the things I want to emphasize, this is why the store is important as well, mm -hmm. is because we, we speak about uh, having roughage, which is what uh, these vegetables are. And what they help to do mm -hmm. is to clean out your intestinal system. We don't think about once it passes the tongue, it's got to go through the stomach, the intestines, feed and give nutrition to our bodies, our cells, mm -hmm. for our hair, for our eyes, everything that we need, you know, to, to have a, a more vibrant, healthy life. We don't think about it. Once it gets past the tongue, we had uh, Dr. Farif, uh, uh on mm -hmm. our uh, Zari Farif on our show before, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, he's got a book uh, called Slaves of the Tongue, and and I had to really think about this. Everything we eat basically is based on taste. Does it taste good? We don't care about what it does for us or what it doesn't do, mm -hmm. man. Because if you just ate the food without the seasoning, you wouldn't eat it Be in, in most cases, except for fruits and vegetables. But the other things you have to season, uh, potatoes. Um, there's so many things that we have to season, especially the meats. You wouldn't eat them if you didn't have some ketchup or something on there to help <laughs> it slide past your tongue. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to not let the tongue, which is one organ, uh, be the king, the czar that rules all the other organs in the body. And the mm -hmm. tongue's gonna, doing a good job now, too, because, it's, oh, man, that tastes good. Mm -hmm. Got to have it. Mm -hmm. You're uh, right about that. Because uh, yeah. I think in terms, this is just me, I think in terms of, What's happening to my liver? What's happening to my kidneys? What's happening to my uh, other internal organs? And mm -hmm. am I doing any good? So as uh, Theo suggested, kill. And it's very high. As a matter of fact, it's the most potent vegetable when it comes to vitamin K, which is good for your bones. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't want to have uh, arthritis issues. You don't want to get older and have physical issues because your quality of life diminishes and even your mindset uh, about your condition can cause you to diminish. We don't realize how much mentally 
our mind affects our health as well. Mm -hmm. And we do have mental health issues in our community. It's undeniable. But uh, it's also a stigma. Oh, oh he nuts. You know, mm -hmm. He's not nuts. He needs somebody to talk to. You know, right. and everybody right. does. So we've got to work on physical and mental health. We just mm -hmm. have to absolutely do it. And, and take time to talk because black youth now are... Uh, increasing in suicidal behavior mm. unlike before and uh, mm. and they say between the ages I believe I want to say 10 and 35 mm. uh, but it, let's just say at any age it's not a good thing but particularly right. youth because they're vulnerable uh, as they approach uh, puberty their adolescence their maturity where do I fit in nobody listens to me and, and it's a heartbreaker to hear someone who just didn't have anybody to go to and decided that life wasn't worth living. So mm. so we have to listen and talk to the youth yeah. and, and, and not talk to them, talk with them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know, um, that um, it brings me back to education. And uh, I have mentioned, I guess, before that I attend school board meetings. The Detroit Public school system has a board of education members and there are nine of them i think i remember and the superintendent they meet 12 months out of the year they don't break when school is out for summer they meet nine months out of the year and i uh, attended the uh, school board meetings to make various points to the board members, to the superintendent, and to those who are in attendance. The audience participants are, are not as plentiful as they should be. The meeting that they're having, which is tomorrow, is at Western uh, High School, which is 1500 Scotton Street. Scotton Street. That's a nice street to drive down to. Um, it is um, beginning, as a matter of fact, at Tyreman and, and the Boulevard. Or the, um, and, and you just go straight out, Scott, in the 1500. In the um, meetings, they, they have a committee meeting starts at 5. The board meeting begins at 6 p.m. However, if you wish to address the school board and the superintendent, you need to be there at least by 5.15, 5.20, so that you can sign a little three by five card saying that you want to speak to them to make whatever points you want to make. The uh, school has received almost a billion dollars from the President of the United States. City of Detroit has received almost a billion dollars from the President of the United States. And these may be some of the uh, questions that you have. What are you doing with that money? Several months ago, I attended a school board meeting, at which point the superintendent stated that three high schools were going to be built. Three high schools. Jesus. Last month when I attended a meeting, I asked him, well, when? We, we, you know, we yeah. received that, that uh, uh, report, but they haven't started yet. We have a caller, so I'll just pause for the calls, and we'll see who's on the line. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Share your name and how are you viewing us? This is James Ford from the Obama Weekend again. Oh. <laughs> I told you I was going to call back. Yes. I, I, and I had to keep my promise. All right. And uh, I just tell the listeners this. Those 20s should be crawling out your pocket because I'm going to give you some information. You know, Phil, you got a birthday coming up, and I just can't get it right when the date is, but we proud to have you in this city. You have the whole uh, hood research uh, organization. This is a frontline organization, and you're a frontline sister. We're glad to have you in our midst. You know, your dedication to the city is impeccable. You have informed us. You have told us who to vote for, and you definitely told us to vote. And you've told us. A lot of other things that we need to know. You've enlightened us. You've adopted the school, and you've made us understand things that we weren't even thinking about, like what you're talking about right now. You've kept the show what going where other shows have failed. 
you know, some people may think I know you. But I do a little bit, but you're a frontline sister. <laughs> when I call you, you sometimes don't call me back. And you said, ain't nobody but James Ford. And call, I'm going to call you back and call you back in three days. Because you're a frontline sister. And you're doing the other stuff. Mm. But we're blessed to have you. We're blessed to have Hood Research. And we're, everybody should be donating. You should be joining Hood Research. You got people that are not giving you something back. This lady is giving you something. <laughs> Some people are listening, and you've been on the show, and you have it for being on her show. Those 20s, as I said, and maybe some of those 50s should be crawling out your watch. <laughs> you have Zell. You got all type of other ways to give. You know, you play the lottery. You go to the casino. You get your groove on. You have your little special drink, you know, and this is important that we help people that's helping us. So I'm just going to say, 40 years of service, somebody's listening, somebody, think about what I'm saying. Let some of those 20s crawl out their pocket and crawl right over to hood research because this is to have to say. She get out in the cold. She's making phone calls to Lansing and wherever else. God bless you. Thank you. James Ford, <laughs> would you please tell us how to join or donate to hood research? Uh, God bless all you. All righty. Th thank you for calling uh Right. James, uh, Hood, Hood Research is 31 years old this year, and uh, we want to let you know that an annual membership is $20, lifetime membership is $300, and uh, if if you want to uh, send a uh, a donation, a lifetime membership or annual membership, you can send it right here to WHPR, 160 Victor Street. 160 Victor Street, Highland Park, 48203. That's 160 Victor Street, V I C T O R, Highland Park, Michigan, 48203 for Hood Research. And yes, I, I think everyone should really keep in mind what uh, Brother Ford has said because it's very important. Number one, 31 years. That's a long time in the game for anybody who's in the game. And to be still very viable, stable, with a strong foundation, and certainly uh, an excellent track record, you can't find many grassroots organizations that have endured many times the uh, the membership, uh, those who are running certain little private areas of it, uh, they just fall off. They go into other ventures or they just stop. Hood Research has not stopped. Matter of fact, Hood Research has gotten stronger as it's moved on. Uh, and I think another thing that he said, especially what, what caught me was when he mentioned the uh, people playing lottery. Uh, <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I have been in a uh, place where they're playing lottery and mm -hmm. somebody didn't play 50, 80, $100 worth of numbers. It just, yeah, it's just mind-blowing, yes. Whoa. It is mind-blowing. I say, well, I hope they hit because, wow. you know, that $50, $80, and they have no qualms about it at all. Mm. So if you would spend that much mm. towards lottery, then $20 just for a membership to Hood Research will be invaluable to you. Yeah. And let's just say you do hit the lottery. Well, give Hood Research a little taste of that money too then. Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't hit for like $500. I'm sure you can donate. You donate to the church and you may not get nothing out of it, but to be able to help wash the pastor's car, well, <laughs> go ahead and put that $20 with an organization that's out there. Down, as Theo was saying, we're getting back to it, at school board meetings, at police uh, commissioner meetings, at uh, you you name it, Hood Research is there, or we've got uh, field associates who are there. So mm -hmm. contribute to an organization that does give back because everyone you contribute to, particularly some of these institutions, and I'm not attacking any, so it could be synagogue, mm -hmm. mosque, or church, but if they're not giving anything back to you and they're still taking from you, uh, that's like pouring water into a bucket with a hole in it. Mm -hmm. you, you, it's being wasted. So, again... 
31 years and strong. Here we are on the air. We've done radio. We've done a little bit of everything. I mean, <laughs> if you look at the timeline of Hood Research, uh, and we do intend in the future, Theo and I have talked about that. I'm sure she's talked to it with others, where people will come and speak about how they became familiar with Hood Research, what they've done along with research, uh, Hood Research, and how it's actually helped and benefited their lives. So we get back to the education, but I, I'm going to bring this up uh, in the next half of the show when we get there right. about, again, donating. And she gave you the information. If you didn't have your pen and paper handy uh, of where to send your donation, we'll give you that in the next half hour. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. I uh I wasn't a expecting a James Ford to you know, to call in, but I really uh, appreciate him. And you all need to know that he's been very uh, uh, dedicated to the Obama weekend as well, which is the first weekend in August because Obama's birthday is August the 4th. And uh, he's planning on one for this year as well. And he's uh, always contributed uh, to uh, hood research and the things that we do, and he is a, a member of Hood Research. I want to ask people to follow Hood Research on Twitter. We have a Facebook page and a website, and uh, the um, email is contact at hoodresearch.org. Again, that's C-O-N-T-A-C-T, -T, and the little A with the circle around it, then H O O D R E S E A R C H dot O R G. And we are coming up on our second break. You know, <laughs> it's either feast or famine around here as far as guests are concerned, but we are never without conversation. And the show is moving fast <laughs> anyway. So uh, if, if you have some. Uh, you can think could benefit from tuning in, call them and uh, refresh your, your milk or your coffee or your juice, and we'll be back after we pause for the calls. We'll be back momentarily. This is Bruce Simpson, your city of Detroit ombudsman. I am here to address all of your complaints and concerns. If you need assistance regarding city services, please contact my office at 313-224-6000 or contact us via email at ombudsman at DetroitMI.gov. This is Bruce Simpson, your City of Detroit Ombudsman. It's the V's Nuts Show with your host Butter and Friends. Butter here, magician escape artist, practicing for my show tonight. Come on in, have a seat. Seconds. You gotta be enough to get out of this one. Twist a little turn, cut It's showtime. It's your old friend Butter here. I may be a nut, but I know to wear my mask. Please welcome my first guest tonight, fitness guru Wally Wama. I wouldn't warm it here to tell you to wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds so you will stay healthy and strong like me. Almond Cruz here, sliding in with the news. This is what we must do to stay away from the la 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 chin and other germs in the air that might be trying to get on you. Social distancing is a wonderful way to see friends. As long as you're six feet apart, you win. Hey there, friends. I wouldn't miss this for the world. It's me, Pumpkin Spice, your healthy girl. Remember, it's important to use your kind hearts and follow the signs to stay healthy and safe at all times. Chica Chimitsky here to say, don't forget the little ones that need you to lead the way. That's how we remember to wash our hands, mask, and social distance today. Morgan Brazen. Yes, it's me. Here to sing about health and safety. We are all here to help get a message out to your grapevine. Teaching healthy choices to stay safe all the time. Don't let these guys drive you nuts. Put your mask on first, they'll let you be. And it keeps me safe from the la, 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 chin that's trying to get on me. Butter me up, she's right, you know. Thank you, Hallie Cranberry, for joining the show. 
Let's all be nuts about our health. Social distancing, wash your hands frequently, use hand sanitizer, and wear a mask. Practice what we learn to stay away from the ah, 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 We're all in this together. Coming soon, the many adventures of these nuts in a theater near you. It's time to do something more. Join the Detroit Police Department, either straight out of high school or make a bold career change. Officers start at $40,000, plus health insurance, paid vacation, retirement plans, and more. Apply online at joindetroitblue.org. You ready to put your podcast on iHeartRadio? Yes, your podcast on iHeartRadio. What about Alexa, Roku, Fire Stick, Apple TV, Android, or iPhone? Plus live TV streaming. Get your podcast seen and heard all over the world. Call 313-868-6612. Pre-recorded shows are accepted to be archived. This is a WHPR distribution platform. Download the app from the App Store. Go to WHPRTV.com. Channels available for lease 24-7 on Roku. Roku, Fire Stick, or Apple TV. Coming soon, subscription and pay-per-view. Also, Block time is available. Get yours. Call 313-868-6612. That's 313-868-6612. Executive producer, R.J. Watkins. Program director, Henry Tyler. 107.5 FM, WGPR, HD2. Radio, we can see dot com. Have you ever wanted your own TV show? Have you dreamed of showcasing your talent for the world to see? Well, now you can. Have your own TV show. You can have your own 30-minute show. Not only will you be seen in the Detroit area, but you can be viewed worldwide. For more information, call 313-868-6612. Visit our studios and receive a free TV interview to promote your business, church, or organization. By appointment only. You're watching WHPS, Highland Park, Detroit. WGPR Detroit, HD2. Hi, this is Theo Groton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHBR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback, feedback, feedback. Take us along with you. And we are back for the last segment, and it has been moving so fast. Sometimes I wonder about this clock. <laughs> 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 Just want to let you know right quick that tomorrow the school board meeting for the Detroit Public School System CD is going to be held at the uh, Western International School, which is at 1500 Scotton Street. It's in Detroit, 6 o'clock. And if you want to speak to the board and the superintendent, you should be there at least 15, 20 minutes before um, 6, say, 5, what? 530, uh, 520, so that you'll have an opportunity to do that. Uh, you were going to say. Now, uh, you see the numbers at the bottom of the screen, and I ask you, uh, I guess in the earlier part of the show, to have your pen and paper handy. Now, this Wednesday, April 19th, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., there's going to be a downtown job fair. It's going to be at 1 Zero zero one Woodward Avenue. Uh, they're asking you to bring a resume, certainly dressed to impress, and prepare for on-the-spot interview. Now they're making it easy, and this is one thing that we know in many downtowns it's hard to find a place to park. But you will get free parking validations for the garage at One Campus Marshes Garage, which is located at. 1140 Farmer Street. Mm. Now it's free parking, so you don't have to worry about a meter made or nobody uh, mm -hmm. uh, creating an issue. Now they have over 1,000 job openings, wow. which includes security, retail, restaurants, childcare, gaming, maintenance, environmental services, and more. Uh, you can work. 
they have positions for full time, part time, seasonal, and special events, which means you can fit it into your schedule if you're a student, perhaps, and right. you can't work full time, then there's part time openings. Mm -hmm. If a certain time of the year you're not able, they have seasonal jobs and special events. Now, featured jobs from the Detroit, downtown Detroit Business Improvement Zone, BIZ, and many others are involved. Now, job seekers are strongly encouraged to uh, participate and register. Again, I'll repeat that, and then I'll do it once again at the end of the show. Downtown Job Fair, this Wednesday, April 19th, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at 1001 Woodward Avenue. Have your resume, uh, dress professionally, and prepare for an on-the-spot interview. And as I said, there's over a thousand plus job openings. We wow. live in Detroit. This is our city. Mm -hmm. Why not work? Matter of fact, it, it's e even better because I look at it, if you don't have transportation, there's public transportation. Mm -hmm. You're going to be working right here in the city where you live. So you really can't go wrong with that. And uh, with all the variety of jobs that they have, uh, you can fit in somewhere. And this is another reason. Now, Theo was speaking before the, the uh, last break about uh, attending school board meetings where we're talking about education. It's very important for you to uh, encourage your children to stay in school. And those who have not uh, remained in school, you can still get a GED. These things are available. I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Theo, I think Wayne County Community College has something. Where yes, you that's correct. They have it. Uh, uh, four nine six two six zero zero is the telephone number three one three four nine six twenty six hundred. Wayne County Community College has the GED program, and on um, most of the jobs now, if if you don't have a high school diploma and you have your GED, um, what is the certificate? Yes. Uh, you can uh, still apply and be hired. Uh, for the various jobs. So don't let that stop you from uh, uh, participating in it. And it's very necessary. Don't be ashamed. You want to benefit and better yourself. And what what the BD has, has just explained and what we talked about about the GED are ways to benefit and improve your own circumstances. And only you can be the judge of where you want to go in life. You got to start, then start. And it still says there are three kind of people. What are those people, Theo? <laughs> well, now let me tell you about it. There are those are people who make things happen. Yeah, that's the kind everybody would like to be. But then, you know, there's the kind that sit on the porch or just walk around in the park and, and just just watch what's going on. Wonder what's going on over there. Wonder what they're doing over there. They just watch things happen. And then there's that third group of people who walk around and they scratch their heads and they shake their heads and they say, huh, I wonder what happened. Mm. Don't be that class of people. Just get involved. Make things happen yourself. And working together is how we can make things happen. You can call your representatives in Lansing and tell them the $15 an hour ballot question was passed. Why wasn't it implemented? Because the Republicans were in charge, in the majority that means, in Lansing, senators, represent state reps, they gutted it. Once it was approved, call your legislators because we now have control of the state Senate, the state House, and the state governor's seat. They can change things. They can implement that $15 an hour raise. Call your representatives and tell them you want them to get on it, get on it. Review what happened and make it happen. The point that the $15 an hour raise was approved by the majority and it needs to be implemented. Second thing that happened was Bill 406, okay, 
We didn't want an emergency manager. We didn't want the kinds of things that happened to the residents in the city of Detroit and their property taxes and their retirees, for God's sake. So what happened? The Republican legislators gutted out 406, came up with 436. Now that we have democratic control in Lansing, you can call your representatives and tell them to restore Proposition 406. They can do that. Don't let them give you a bunch of crap. They can do it. We want to make things happen. Send an email. Send a text. Get on Twitter. Talk about it. Follow her research on Twitter. Bring up the conversation. But contact them and let them know. And don't forget the governor. Okay. She can also push for the $15 an hour raise. She can also push for 436 to be canceled out and go back to the one that we approved, 406. Now, I would add to that that we have a relationship with those politicians. We're supposed to have, I will say, a relationship with those politicians mm -hmm. who represent us. Now, in a relationship, communication is important. They have a lot of constituents, and you are part of the constituency. Mm -hmm. If you don't let them know how you feel, how will they know how you feel? Uh, that's what a relationship is about, communication. If you don't tell them that your street lights are out, if you don't tell them that the pavement is cracked, if you don't express it, then telling the man next door to you or your neighbor across the street will benefit neither one of you because all you're doing is keeping it among yourselves. There are people who are termed or called movers and shakers, and for us, those are the politicians. So if I want, and I have called the governor's office too, and you know, it's kind of funny, and I've sent some stuff there too, and, and uh, it seems like, and I've contacted, I, I should say, local media stations as well, television stations, and it's mm -hmm. kind of funny that some of the feedback you'll get from them, but the point is, is that if you contact them, they will have to acknowledge that you contact them mm -hmm. and give feedback. But if you don't, you know, this show is called Feedback. Mm -hmm. Now, you got to give them feedback. You can see the logo behind me. It says Feedback. That's mm -hmm. what we need. That's right. uh, if you don't feed, you get nothing back in the first place. That's right. So I, I would encourage you to let them know that you, John Q. Public or Jane Q. Public, are out there and that you have interests and concerns and that you want them to address those concerns. And whether you do or not, tell them that you are a regular voter because that might intimidate them. <laughs> that way, oh, yeah. <laughs> and say, oh, yeah, I vote, and uh, I don't want to have to vote for your opponent. I'd like to vote for you again, but I need to see you doing something that makes me feel like you're worth my vote because if not, I have to find somebody who will address my issues. Mm -hmm. They will take that to heart. Number one, they probably like their job. Some of them don't <laughs> see themselves as public servants, but they are public servants. Mm -hmm. And you can tell any one of them, we pay your salary. You are paying their salary. Absolutely. Uh, they're your employee. Mm -hmm. You are the boss. Right. But if right. you don't act like a boss. They'll keep <laughs> stepping on you. They'll keep using you. They will keep putting out uh, ideas that, that will benefit them and not you. Don't let that happen. Don't let them step on you. Don't let them use you. Call them. Yeah, think about our, uh, I put it in quotes, brother, Clarence, Uncle Tom Thomas, oh. and <laughs> hanging out with a billionaire who has uh, plenty of Nazi memorabilia. Mm -hmm. Well, whose ear do you think, uh, or whose concerns do you think, uh, Uncle Tom, I mean, uh, Judge Thomas will fulfill. He's going to fulfill the needs of those who, uh, and he's in a, you know, that's that's a problem too, a lifetime appointment with Supreme Court, but that's another mm -hmm. subject. But the same way uh, he has his influencers, we know that the Illiches, the uh, Penskys, uh, I guess it's a guy, uh, Dan Gilbert. Gilbert, and some guy, Stephen something or other. Ross, 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 yeah. Yeah. Ross yeah. We know that they are making noise and they are being heard. Mm -hmm. But do you know and that serviced. <laughs> a thousand people can make uh, a lot more, get more attention than that one person? So we have to raise our voices above those of the ones with the, the money because, uh, in the end, the, the public servants 
are not serving the public. That's right. We got a problem with that. Absolutely. And you know, um, speaking about Clarence Thomas and and his uh, sugar daddy, <laughs> if the sugar daddy has a lot of uh, Nazi memorabilia, uh, that's that's passed around by the Germans, by the way. Uh, during the Holocaust, what we hear about is six million Jews being slaughtered. The total of people who were slaughtered was not six million. It was 18 million. You don't hear about that because the Jewish community makes sure that you know their story. The others who have uh, ancestors who were slaughtered don't. And if that history is hidden, then you'll never hear about it. But as far as Clarence Thomas is concerned, the uh, Nazis killed black people. You don't hear about that. It was about, I forget how many now, 12, 12 million or so. But anyway, um, different six and 18, at least 12, right? Yes. So there was a percentage of that additional 18, uh, part of the 18 total, who were black. They killed disabled people. They just slaughtered anybody that uh, they, they did not think was perfect. And, and why Hitler thought the perfect person was blonde-haired and blue-eyed when he was neither is interesting <laughs> in itself. It really is. Definition of insanity. Uh, hey, yes. Uh, but for Clarence Thomas to be so uh, abiding to a man who praises those who kill folk that look like Clarence Thomas is interesting in itself. Maybe we should mail something to him and say, did you know that uh, your sugar daddy <laughs> loves those Nazis who kill black people like you? Interesting, too, because uh, we know that uh, 45 was associated with uh, not only the Klan, at least his father was, and mobsters as well, mm -hmm. but uh, also was associated with the uh, KKK as well. And we know that uh, the wife, uh, Jenny Thomas, uh, I'm sure she wears the pants in the family. I'm sure he's got trousers, but he don't wear the pants in the mm -hmm. family. He just wears trousers or shorts. <laughs> and uh, and we know that she's a staunch Republican and certainly a, a supporter of 45 mm -hmm. and uh, many of the other people. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Mary, Marjorie Taylor Greene, you name it. She's a supporter of all that. So mm -hmm. he just seems to me to be the, the quiet man who... Who, who's maybe a henpeck husband, mm -hmm. and he follows the dictates of the so-called "quote-unquote" dominant society. Right. So, so we can't count on Uncle Thomas, uh, uh, Judge Thomas Clarence, <laughs> to uh, be there. But we, but th then again, this is where uh, contacting people who are in positions of power becomes mandatory right. because we gave them power. They didn't have power. They didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. We gave them power a powerful seat, we gave them a voice. But if they don't hear our voice, and, and it's absolutely, and you know, I'll tell you, I might be what they call a gadfly back in the day, which is that little thing that would always annoy a horse that just, you know, pinching at it, you know, biting it and nipping it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But that's what you have to do with these politicians. You have to kind of... Uh, bite them you have you have to make your presence known sting them a little bit mm -hmm. so that oh wow you know they swishing their tail like a horse would you get the fly off of them mm -hmm. but the fly come on back so be determined yes that's it mm -hmm. uh, and we need to uh start a movement of this just call and let others know the same thing yeah, I tend to on my Facebook page and those uh, who are friends, and I don't let everybody become quote unquote friends. But I will post. I post those numbers. I post this kind of information because uh, I got to get it out of my system, and I mm -hmm. have to uh, use whatever platforms we have, which includes this show, to let people know. Get it out of your system. Like say, talking to the neighbor down the street or across the street will do neither one of you any. Mm -hmm. uh, 
good if you don't tell somebody who can do something about it. Right. You know, you can tell me, but I can't do nothing about it. But you and I can do something about it if That's we work right. together. And and once we, and it's, it's an odd thing that you can build momentum because once you get a few people going, other people just see it and mm -hmm. want to become involved. Mm -hmm. This is how most movements start. You want to be a part. We got a common cause. That's right. Common needs, mm -hmm. and we need to have that uh, common concern. And then they say, well, these people aren't playing because we know the Tea Party wasn't playing, which is why Bush and all that and, and the MAGA people, those people aren't playing. They, they, they know the game. They playing for keeps. That's right. And, and it's uh, important to share the information. You know, when I was coming up, I, I would hear this all the time. You don't talk about religion. You don't talk about politics. You don't talk about religion. Don't talk about politics. And I kept thinking, I wonder why. When on Saturday, somebody wouldn't, you know, here, I have some information for you. And it would be, what was the Watchtower thing they were yes. passing out? And, and they would talk about religion. And I started thinking, well, if they can talk about religion, why I keep hearing people say don't talk about religion? You can talk about religion. <laughs> it's your prerogative, too. And you can talk about politics. You don't have to get into a knockdown, drag out, fight with anybody. But you can talk about it. And that's what we need to do. We need to spread the word about what's going on and, and how there are some elected officials who want to step on us. They want to use us so that they can continue to uh, build their influence and their bank account. And we got to work together. And, and, you know, it's interesting, one of the uh, things that, uh, and I'm not sure what, uh, I believe it was with the, the police department, but there was uh, recently, within the last three weeks, I'll say, a police officer who was, like, just getting, let's say, little things on the side, little perks on the side. Yes. And, uh, but what got me was that it was less than $15,000. I'm thinking uh -uh. to myself, man, what? You know, that's chump change. Go to jail for <laughs> chump change. It makes you yeah. a chump. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, some people think they can't get caught, just like some of the knuckleheads who want to try to carjack somebody or something. You think you can't get caught. You will get caught. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's too much going on now. There's somebody that don't like you in the first place, and if they see your picture pop up on the 6 o'clock news, oh, that's jelly right there. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna drop a dime on jelly. So, so don't think you can't get caught because one thing about criminals is that they don't do it. They they include other people in and say, "Man, guess what I did?" Well, one of your boys don't like you anyway. Mm -hmm. and he said, "Yeah, this is one way I always wanted his girl Sheila. So let me get him oh. out the way. <laughs> drop this dime. He he can do some time, and you know I can holler at him." Hmm. Wasn't it somebody who did that? <laughs> uh, Solomon, Solomon, Solomon. David. And uh, it David. Yeah. A and they sent the the boyfriend or husband or somebody to the front line. Right. Because he wanted his wife. Yeah. History repeats itself. <laughs> and there's a lot of Davids around you. Oh <laughs> Lord, yeah. <laughs> that is very interesting. Hmm. Now, when we were talking earlier and Theo was uh, speaking about education, one of the things I want to say quickly, many of you who have seen one of the various news programs uh, have saw that, you know, we had some shootings and some deaths in downtown Detroit, four different incidents, mm. and a lot of them were teenagers, which is why uh, uh, the chief white now is uh, imposing or implementing the uh, – uh, curfew because they were like 15, 16, which are which is just unrestrained youth mm -hmm. uh, who I, I know one of the shootings where a person actually died and, and three others were injured uh, because somebody oh. took cuts in line. What? Yeah, oh, yeah, wow. it was it was that simple, stupid, and ridiculous. Somebody took cuts and somebody got an attitude about it, and so there was gunplay. This was over near Buffalo Wild Wings, right down the street from. Uh, um, uh, the Greek town. Uh, there was an uh, incident in Hart Plaza. But I, I bring that up only to say that the youth, mm. uh, you parents, and some of you grandparents are actually raising your grandchildren mm. uh, because of whatever reason the parent is not there. Mm -hmm. uh, which is why we have to more or less try to corral them because if they're left to the influences of music 
and media, mm -hmm. uh, social media in particular, where where you you get stripes. Just like the guy that I believe this was in, uh, this was definitely in Tennessee, where the man while he was shooting up uh, the school, he was videotaping it live on Facebook. So some people are actually going for notoriety for mm. the most negative of behavior, and they're proud of it too. You know, mm. they don't even intend to live. We have to, again, mm. uh, catch our youth young. Uh, most of my uh, nieces and nephews, you know, and we had a little, one of my uh, great uh, nephews, he's very disorderly at my mom's house the other day, and uh, we, you know, trying to get him to just chill so what my brother did, because he's young, maybe three or four years old, my brother just held him by his feet so his head was hanging to the ground. He said, this is one way to keep him from running around. He can't do nothing now. He's very vulnerable. Well, that, you know, And it wasn't extreme. You know, the child might have thought it was playful. But the thing is, is that we were trying to, and we're doing a little better with uh, corralling his rambunctious and rebellious behavior because if we don't now, the police will have to do it later mm -hmm. because we, you know, and there's a point, particularly when you get around puberty, that if a child has not been uh, disciplined in those early years when you can control them, when they get to be a teen, don't start asking them, well, I want you to take out the garbage. Well, he should have been taking it out earlier because mm -hmm. now he's going to resist that. They feel in their own uh, adulthood coming, you know, the hormones and everything. Like, mm -hmm. And then some of them, you know, it's, it's crazy, but it's true. Some of them say, you know what, I think I can take dad, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because they want to be a man. Now they uh, don't have a, a, a pot to urinate in or nothing. Uh, no, they can't pay rent. Right, but mm -hmm. they want to be the man, but they don't have, other than their hormones, they don't have it. So mm -hmm. let's just try to put that in check. And that's the other reason why I bring up the educational process, because here in the Detroit Public School System of Detroit, there were classes taken out of the curriculum, classes that cause the young students to want to come to school, classes that cause you to want to stay in school, classes that want you to learn. They, they had uh, a wood shop, metal shop. They had all kinds of uh, classes that, that would, would pique the interest and hold the attention of the students. We hear about sports, we hear about music, and there's nothing wrong with sports or music. There have been many professionals who've, who have come from Detroit through the Detroit public school system. But there are other young people that need to be thought about, that need to be cared about, that need to be introduced to opportunities of other directions. And one of the main reasons why I've been attending the school board meetings is because electric cars are coming. Whether you want them or not is irrelevant. They are coming. There was a uh, question yesterday. I was out on channel surfing, and, and um, the uh, request is that uh, the number of electric cars planned be doubled so that uh, – we can get more on the road, uh, avoid the uh, emissions of, that we have now, the global warming and, and the kind of uh, air that we're breathing is getting worse and worse. Now with that, the, the increase of uh, electric vehicles, we have to have charging stations, right? We, we have to have electrical parts for the uh, dashboard for, for the whole vehicle and elsewhere. And so our young people need to be introduced to those types of jobs, uh, those types of inventions that probably have not come out yet. So the curriculum has to be adjusted to that. That's one of the main reasons why I go. The other main reason is because of the Benjamin Davis Aerospace School, which was located on the city airport, which is now called the Coleman Young International Airport. That school was producing black pilots, black airplane mechanics, air traffic controllers, etc., aviation students. They do have some classes there in the building built by the Tuskegee Airmen but not as much as they had 
in the past prior to that school being uh, relocated in a neighborhood where it could never work. You cannot have Benjamin Davis airspace in a senior neighborhood. If they were to start up an airplane engine to scare folk to death in any other neighborhood for that matter. But that's what we need to do. And we are at the end of this show. It has gone too fast today. Oh, oh my goodness. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello. Thank you. This Hello, Mr. Wonderful engineer. Yes. Good morning, everyone. The engineer, Tim Smith. Uh, just want to say real quick, Mr. Theo Broden, you've been on the airways for a long, long time. Ladies and gentlemen, looking at Miss Theo, looking good today, her birthday. <laughs> Ain't got a thing of gray in her hair. I got more gray hair than she do. <laughs> and she's only 21 years old. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> but anyway, on the behalf of the staff, management of TV33, WHPR, 88.1, WVIE, 107.3, we all wish you, Theo Broden of Hood Research and Feedback, a happy birthday. Thank you so Happy much. Happy birthday oh, to you. <laughs> Enjoy. Oh, I will. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Our wonderful engineer, Tim Smith. Oh, yes, yes. And he, and he keeps us on, keeps us going, keeps us clear. Every Monday, we want you to know. Every Monday at 9 a.m. Thank you for that. And I want to quickly interject uh, for those, I hope you had your pen and paper handy. This Wednesday, April 19th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., 1001 Woodward Avenue, a job fair. Again, this Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., free parking validations. If you park at the One Campus Marshes Garage, which is located at 1140 Farmer Street, over 1,000 job openings. Please take advantage of it. Absolutely. And I want you to know it's not necessary for you to know everything. What is necessary is for you to know how to find what you need when you need it. You see, the BD has found out some very vital information for those who are looking for employment. We seek out as much information as we can to share with you, and we encourage you to share with us. I need you to know that the telephone number for Hood Research is area code 248 Two three four, two three seven one. Again, that's area code two four eight, two three four, two three seven one. As Henry would say, two four eight, two three four, twenty three seventy one. <laughs> and as I always say, if you want to be nothing, do nothing. But the only problem with doing nothing is you never know when you finish. So get that job. All right, and stay with Hood Research and Feedback. And we will be back next Monday, 9 a.m. Peace. Peace. Feedback. 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 Hi, this is Theo Broughton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback. Feedback. Feedback.